Good day. This is Word Harriman, AE6TY. I thought I'd take a few moments and show you some of the features you can see in SimSmith version 16.3. These features were in earlier versions, but the new documentation brings them to the light of day. The subject for today is going to be T matching networks. And I'm going to use this as a way to show some of the things you can do with uh, version 16. So let's start out with a basic T network. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of this frequency sweep, because I'm not going to be sweeping anything by frequency. And I'm going to add some component variation here because what I'm interested in knowing is given a very given the values of these components what kinds of loads can I match to 50 ohms so I'm going to give it some component variation to work with here and these are not unreasonable values. They may not be as good or as bad as what you want to explore, but they give you an idea of what you can do. And we can turn on the sweeping. And this tells us that with these components, I can transform this 50 ohms into these impedances. Well, it turns out that's not really what I'm interested in. What I'm really interested in knowing is what are the set of load impedances which this circuit can transform into 50 ohms. So it's in a way it's kind of like running it backwards and it is documented in the manual under backwards. And to plot that, what I really need to do is a Smith chart plot. So I'm going to say on the Smith chart, I want to plot L what is called INVZ. So here we have it. What are these dots? These dots are the loads which this circuit can transform into 50 ohms. Now, we need to prove to ourselves that that is exactly what's happening. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the path. And I need to pick one of these dots. Let's me maybe pick this one. And I'm going to tune those component values such that they are what caused this dot. So, and the way I do that is by right-clicking on that dot. So, I'm going to right-click on the dot. And you'll see that all these values got set. But the path still isn't there anywhere we can see it, right? Because here's the path. Well, that's the path because we didn't set the load to match this point. So let's go back up here. We'll match that point, and we'll see that it's 19.3 plus 14.2. So we're going to say 19.3 and 14.2. Now, why are we saying that? Well, again, because we believe that that point is a load that this circuit with these values should make 50 ohms, and we're going to check that. And here we see there's where we started, that's the load, and it transformed it into 50 ohms. So you can see the path there. It's a little hidden. So we have proven that the these dots represent load impedances, which this circuit can transform into 50 ohms. It's pretty good coverage. 
Now, that's not the entire issue, of course, because we want to know, well, just how efficiently or how poorly does that match work? And if we're going to talk about efficiency, we need to talk about losses. So let me set the loss of my inductor, which is probably where most of my power gets lost. I'm going to set that relatively low here. And now something surprising happens. We see dots landing outside the Smith chart. Now, a lot of people immediately will say, Woof, that's just a bug. That can't be. There shouldn't be dots outside the circle. But it turns out that it's telling you the right thing. Let's make it worse. Now I have lots of dots outside the circle. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that even if your load has a negative impedance, this circuit could still match it. And the reason it can match it is because the negative load impedance could be compensated for by resistances or losses inside this inductor. And just to verify it, let's say we have no loss in the inductor, then there's no way to compensate for a negative load. And it's all consistent. So let me set this back up to be something more or less reasonable. OK, so now we know that we have losses in our network. And we're curious, how lossy is this? Well, let's see what we can find out. I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off sweeping, because I'm going to do a bunch of typing. And it gets a little annoying because it's trying to keep up. And I'm going to define a function of power. And I'm going to say, if the power is less than what I want to be the red power, I'm going to return red. And if the power is less than something I'm going to call yellow, Turns out I know that's yellow, and I, I need to return it. And otherwise, I'm going to return green. OK, so now I have this little function that I can call that will convert the power into a color. And I'm going to do that right here. And I'm going to pass it the power. And I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to set my level. So if I get less than uh, 0.8 watts to the load, it's red. And 0.9 watts to the load, it's yellow. And here we have a chart which shows the coverage of our T matching network given this range of component values, and here are the efficiencies. And I can play with these, of course, if I'd like. Let's say red is 0.5 and yellow is 0.7. So I can play with these values kind of at will and decide uh, where I want the various points to be. Now, if we look down in here, we see some interesting phenomena. Um, let's look, say, mm -hmm, here's a good place. Let's look in here. What we see in here is an area, an impedance area, where we could be green, we could be yellow, or we could be red. In fact, if we, let's do an extended sweep. Extended sweep will be 100,000 points. I'm going to run this, but I'm going to cut the runtime out of the video because it takes a while. So there we have it. Now we have a bunch. Notice down in here, ooh, we're getting to be something really easy to match, and there's a red dot. Now, that red dot tells you that there are reasonable things to ask this circuit to do, which turn out to be a bad choice.
because somehow you've chosen an inductance which is just too big. Now, it doesn't happen very often, but the fact that it can happen is a little disconcerting. Now, one of the ways people cope with this is they don't use a T-match, they use a differential T-match. And the differential T has the advantage that you, you can't, you, what match you get, you match you get. You can't have a good match and a bad match. You can either have a match or not a match. And that certainly makes operating life easier. And maybe we want to look at that. So let's look at that. We're going to draw, we're going to compare. So we're going to, we're going to use an isolation block. And then we're going to turn off sweeping again. And we're going to get rid of this one because we don't need it. And now let's go ahead and draw our second T network. And if we want to do a real comparison, we want to plot them both at the same time with the same set of values. And I'm going to use a daemon block to automate some of this. So I'm going to say that C3's F capacitance is equal to C1's capacitance. I'm going to say that L2's inductance is equal to L1's inductance. And I'm going to say C4's capacitance is equal to whatever the max is. And I'll go put that in, minus C1 dot F. And so this capacitor will track this, this inductor will track this, and this capacitor will track the, the differential, the other side. And we're going to set our max to be 500p. So now we have two T networks. One is a full T, one is a differential T, and I'm going to run them both together. And I'm, you know, this is taking up a bunch of room, and I don't really like this. I know what the daemon block does, so I'm going to make it narrow. And I know the L and the C1 and the L1 and the C2 are things I already know about. I don't need to be playing with them, so I'm going to narrowize those just so I can make room on my graph or on my desktop. And of course, I want to plot the color of LG1, this thing right here, Now I have two things I can plot. Let me turn sweeping back on. And now I have two things being plotted. Turn them both off. Okay, so now we have, let's look at the original. That looks pretty much like what we saw before. It's a good thing because we didn't change anything. And here's the differential version. Differential version, interestingly enough, seems to match pretty much the whole network or the whole Smith chart. It doesn't have a lot of really bad matches. In fact, most of the bad matches, the red matches, are well on the periphery. So it doesn't have large areas that um, match badly. Notice I forgot to set the Q. Okay. Q changed it a little bit. Now I have my bad matches. Good thing to check your circuitry. And here we have both. And let's do a large sweep. Let's look, look in here a little bit. Let's do a large sweep in this area. So here we have a focus area. We can turn these on and off. It's pretty quick to turn on and off. Notice here's, here's a green that's coming from LG1. Here's a green coming from N versus Z. Now the way I'm doing that is I'm clicking on the dot. And when I click on the dot, you'll notice something down here gets highlighted. So 
again we'll do a big sweep so there's our differential t it's got pretty much the same coverage as this one not dramatically different so why not always use the differential t well it's really two reasons One is if you look at the, the spacing between these dots, that spacing tells you that a small change in the component value made a huge change in whether it matched or not. You can certainly find a match in here. It's some component value that we haven't traced exactly, but it will be finicky. It's hard. It's finicky in this region. In fact, over here, you'll see that there's really not any really good matches up here. There's not a lot of really good matches down here, but they are matches and they'll be finicky and inefficient, but you, you won't have any nasty surprises. If it matches, it pretty much matches. There's another point which is over here you'll see this region that doesn't match at all. And it's perfectly reasonable to say, well, what kind of antenna is that? And I, if I click up here, I'll see that that's an antenna with an impedance, a highly inductive antenna with an impedance of around 115 ohms. That's not a lot of antennas like that. But that's not the whole story because in between your antenna and your matching network is a feed line. And the feed line can make that point move. So let's put in a feed line. And we'll make it, I, I, I don't know. Well, I don't need to make it anything different. You'll see here now is this region you can't match. And here are some really inefficient areas you can't match. And down here in this area, that's a capacitive antenna. That's an antenna that's too short. So if you're using your T network to match an antenna because it's too short, say, for example, 160 meter vertical or anything that's too short this won't be a good thing it'll be a bad match and it depends on how long your feed line is well here I have a feed line there's no green at all in the differential T So the next time someone tells you that the differential T matches everything, you can say yes. But if they say it matches everything just as well as a T, point them at this video. So this is Ward Harriman, AE6TY, saying thanks for watching and thanks for using SimSmith.